Hello, my name is Matt Heisinga, and I'm going to be going over our 2023 hunting season proposals for the Douglas and Lusk areas. I'm going to start with the season setting process. The beginning is the data analysis, our hunter surveys that get emailed out, our hunter field checks, our harvest data. We look at all of that as we're putting these season proposals together. Once our proposals are put in place, they get sent up to the regional review and get comments and changes there. After that goes up to the department review, which is where we're at now. So these are the season proposals that we're putting forward to the public. We have public meetings scheduled next week, one in Lusk, March 21st at 6 p.m. at the Niagara County Fairgrounds Shooting Sports Building. The next day at March 22nd, we have one in Douglas at 6 p.m. at the Converse County Library Meeting Room. With those public meetings, we also have a public comment period that's open now. All comments can be mailed into our Casper office or sent in online. I'll have some details on that later in the presentation. All of our comments must be received by 5 o'clock p.m. March 29th. Once we get all the comments in place, we'll go through as a region, analyze any of the comments, make any changes that are necessary based on public input. After that, our final proposals will go to our Game and Fish Commission, which meets April 17th and 18th in Casper. We'll begin with Chapter 5, which is our pronghorn regulation. The first one I'm going to talk about is North Converse pronghorn, which is areas 25 and 26 combined. So the current estimated population is about 24,000 pronghorn. The objective is 28,000, so we're a bit under objective, but not real far under. Our preseason classification ratios we look at in August came up with 64 bucks per hundred does, which is pretty high numbers of bucks. The Fawn ratio at 78 fawns per 100 does is higher than we've seen in the past several years, so that's looking really good. However, this winter, it's definitely pretty rough up there, so we're keeping a pretty close eye on recruitment and see what made it through the winter this year. Um, some of that drop in population is likely caused from the EHD outbreaks, in, mainly in 2021, but also in 2022. Looking at Hunter Area 25, we aren't proposing any changes this year. We're going to keep license quotas the same. Antelope have fared a little better in these areas than some of the surrounding areas. We're seeing some pretty high buck ratios still in the area, even though we have a little lower numbers than what we'd like to see. As with Hunter Area 25, Hunter Area 26 is staying the same as last year. We've got high buck ratios and good fawn numbers this year and feel comfortable with the quotas we have in place. Moving east into the Black Thunder pronghorn herd unit, that includes hunter areas 439, 24, 27, and 29. Population objective for all those hunter areas combined is 49,000 pronghorn. We're sitting about 35,000, so we're quite a bit under objective. Uh, for a more detailed description of this area, you can look at the Newcastle, Northeast Wyoming hunting season proposals. I'm just going to cover Hunter Ridge 9, 27, and 29 in my presentation. Hunter Ridge 9 has definitely been hurting over the last several years. We've had pretty poor fawn production and really not getting the recruitment that we want to see, so numbers are definitely going down in the area. We've cut back licenses the last several years and are going to again this year going to be decreasing the type 1 licenses by 50 and also the type 6 licenses by 50. As with other northeast Wyoming pronghorn areas, we've seen some declines in 127 as well. So we are looking to decrease those licenses by 50 this year as well. Hunter area 29 is going to see some license reductions again this year. We're looking to reduce 25 of the type 1 licenses and 50 of the type 2 licenses. The bigger change is going to be in the type 7 Dauphin licenses where we'll be dropping 100 of those licenses down to 50 total. Moving south of Douglas, that spring storm a couple years ago hit that herd pretty good. So we've reduced licenses 
to let them grow back. They're starting to come back, but we're still not seeing the numbers we want to, so we're going to leave licenses as is for now. For the next couple of slides, we'll be looking at Hunter A11 and 103. For more information on those, you can look at the Wheatland Biologist hunting season proposals and get a little more in-depth info for those hunt areas. Right now, just looking at Hunter A11, we're not looking at any changes for this year. Also in area 103, no proposed changes for this year. Okay, that will finish up our pronghorn proposals. Moving into the Douglas area deer proposals for chapter six. Starting with Cheyenne River mule deer, this includes 107, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 21 in Region B, as well as the limit quota area 10. I'll be going through the areas in the southern half of this. If you want a little more information, you can look at the Newcastle biologist proposals for the north half. Population objective for this herd unit is 27,000. Our current estimated population is about 9,400. So the population has been trending downward for the last several years. We're really seeing some low deer numbers in the area. The postseason classifications this last year, we were seeing about 28 bucks per 100 does and 59 fawns per 100 does, which is a bit lower than what we'd like to see on both. Hunt area 10 is our one limit quota area in region B. And we were seeing numbers and quality of deer coming up pretty good. And then last year we saw a decline in the deer population in that area. And so we are looking to cut back a little bit on licenses, reducing 25 type one licenses in that area. Hunt areas 11, 12, 13, and 14 will pretty much be status quo for what we've had over a lot of years with the season lengths. The one change in there with the lower deer numbers and population struggling, we are gonna eliminate the type seven license for doe fawn mule deer entirely, get rid of that license. Similarly, for hunter areas 11, 12, 13, and 14 whitetail deer, we're gonna leave all those seasons the same as they have been in the past. The Numbers in that area took a pretty good hit the last couple of years, but they are starting to come back. But we don't have the numbers to support any increases yet. Looking to the south, Hunt Area 15, again, this is an area that it will be covered in more in depth by the Wheatland biologist proposals. But we are looking at one small change, reducing doe fawn type six licenses from 300 down to 250. Moving up north of Douglas, we're going to get into North Converse, which is Hunter Area 22. The population objective is 9,000 for that area. The current estimated population is about 4,600. So we're about half of our objective. Saw some losses with the HD and Blue Tongue a couple of years ago and possibly a little bit again this last year. Our classification ratios are 67 fawns per 100 does is a little better than we've been seeing. So that's a good sign. Our buck ratios are still high. We've, we've had pretty good buck ratios for quite a while in that area, looking at 49 bucks per 100 does. We are not making any changes in 122 this year. The numbers are down, but we do have good buck ratios, and the opportunity is there for some quality bucks in the area. Looking at South Converse deer in Hunter Area 65, this is a herd that's struggled quite a bit over the years. The population objective is 12,000. Our current estimated population is about 3,500. We've had quite a bit of CWD, EHD, and blue tongue in the area that have impacted the population. Our classification ratios this last year, the buck ratios have stayed pretty consistently high, around 41 bucks per 100 does. Our fawn ratios are just constantly low. We're looking about 47 fawns per 100 does, which is quite a bit lower than what we'd like to see and what we need to see for any growth. We made a couple changes in this area last year, removing the antler point restriction and 
cutting the season length back a little bit. This year, we don't have any proposed changes for our mule deer season. We'll be sticking with the same as last year. We are planning to increase the type three and type eight whitetail licenses to address the whitetail population starting to rebound after the HD outbreak a couple of years ago. Pretty common theme as we go through these deer hunt areas that mule deer are struggling and under objective in all these areas. So the non-resident deer quotas are one way we can adjust our harvest. And so we are looking at reducing some of those in region B and region J, looking to drop the region B quota from 1100 to 1000 and the region J quota from 900 down to 750. That'll finish up all the deer hunt areas for the Douglas Lusk area. Moving over into elk and chapter seven regulations, which will cover area seven, area 113, 122, and 126. After looking at pronghorn and deer numbers, and all of them are under objective, we don't have that issue with elk in this area. So Laramie Peak Muddy Mountain Elk, which is area seven and 19, our population objective is 5,000 elk. We're currently estimating about 12,500 for the herd unit. Starting off with hunt area seven, we only have one big change this year. The type four and type six licenses for the early August 15th to October 14th season will no longer be valid in Converse County. You'll still be able to hunt with those licenses in Carbon and Albany and Platte counties, but Converse County will not be open in August, September, in October, early October. Another big thing in Area 7, a lot of people have probably heard or gotten the survey about the possibility of Area 7 going general. Uh, after careful consideration, public outreach, and reviewing those survey results, we have decided not to implement a general hunting season in Elk Hunt Area 7. Moving up north to hunt area 113 in the Rochelle Hills, we do have some changes in that area this year. The type one license will be open again this year with 50 licenses available. We're closing down the type two and the type four licenses this year, but also bringing in a type three license, which will be open the same season dates as the type one, November 5th through November 30th, and the September archery season. There will be 150 licenses there valid for a spike or antlerless elk. Moving west to the Pine Ridge elk hunt area, 122, that population has grown over the years and we are trying to reduce the population in the area. There's been a few changes this year coming up. We're planning to increase the type one licenses from 125 to 150 licenses and the type sixes from 300 to 350. Another change in that area is for the type one licenses, we've bounced back and forth a little bit between October 1st and 15th season openers. And we are gonna be opening that season October 1st to this year. We've made changes in all the other hunt areas surrounding, but 126 is worked pretty well the way it's sitting and we're not proposing any changes for that hunt area this year. That finishes up all of our big game season proposals for the Douglas and Lusk area. Looking at the last slide here on wild turkeys, there's one change for the fall season this year, which is increasing the Area 3 Type 3 license from 250 to 350 licenses. The 2024 spring season just has one an area that's going to have a slight change. The Area 2 Type 3 will be open from April 1st to April 19th in Natrona County, and the quota will go from 200 to 250 licenses. That license is also valid April 20th to May 31st in Converse and Natrona counties. So I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation about public comment. So if you have comments and want to submit them on any of these proposed seasons, 
they all must be received by 5 p.m. March 29th. That gives us time to review them and make any changes that we feel necessary. There's a couple different ways you can submit comments. You can do it standard mail, send them to our Casper Regional Office. On our website, we have a comment form that you can fill out and print and mail in that way. Or you can also just submit them online at our website as well. The link is shown on this slide here. That brings me to the end of the season proposal presentation for the Douglas and Lusk area. If you have any questions at all on the season proposals, what we're putting forward, or how to comment, any issues with the comment process, feel free to give me a call anytime. My phone number is listed on here at 298-5246. Thanks for watching.